Hello and welcome to the first lesson of Key Question 5, Depression 1 Recovery, 1930 to 1951. The key question that we're looking at now is keeping up morale. And this is going to include things like looking at radio and cinema and their role, looking at Churchill as a wartime leader, propaganda and censorship, and just generally how people in Britain kept their spirits high on the home front during World War II. Um, so in particular today, what we're going to be looking at is radio and cinema and how important radio and cinema actually was to morale. Um, all forms of radio and media, newspapers, magazines, cinema, films and newsreels, all censored during the um, Second World War, all controlled by something called the Ministry of Information, which we will look at later on. Um, and radio and cinema were particularly important and they were used to ensure morale didn't, didn't drop, as well as informing people about different things that were going on during the war as well. So first things first, what do we mean by morale? Well, maintaining the civilian population's morale, so this keeping their spirits high, basically, was an essential part of war on the home front. There were terrors um, happening, there were bombings going on, people had lost their husbands, brothers, sons, uncles in the war, people weren't sure where their relatives were. Um, it was essential that people still supported the war because they were losing so much and sacrificing so much that it was essential that they felt they were doing that for a reason. So keeping people's morale up was a very, very essential part. So the Emergency Powers Defence Act, passed in the summer of 1939, gave the government the powers to create laws without going through Parliament. So basically, if the government deemed that a law was essential for the country's safety, they, they didn't have to debate it, they didn't have to pass it through Parliament, they could just pass it. Um, lots of campaigns are launched to help civilians cope with the day-to-day -day impact of total war, from bombing, rationing, blackouts and evacuations. And these campaigns obviously um, sometimes involved civilians. They got them involved in, in fundraising, um, gave them medals, gave all that kind of thing just to keep morale up. And propaganda attempts to maintain unity and loyalty to, to Britain, maintain confidence, emphasises victories so that we keep telling people it's worth it, keep going, you're doing really well, it's really worth it, we're winning, we're winning, we're winning. Um, and defeats were kept to a minimum, so we weren't really, they weren't really talked about. So, radio. So what I want you to do before we start, actually, is split your page into two, okay? Split your page into two, and on one side I want you to put radio, and the other I want you to put cinema. And I'm going to talk you through this now, and I want you to note-take, okay? So I want you to pick out the key points, and if you need to pause the video to go back, do so. Um, but I want you to pick out the key points from what I'm about to say, and split it on your page, please, okay? So we'll start with radio. Radio is a really important form of communication. Lots of people have a radio at this point um, and they're powerful because they could be heard in people's homes. They're part of their everyday lives. Um, and they were the most listened to type of entertainment during the war. They listened to news bulletins. Um, they listened to music while they worked. Uh, there were sort of soap operas on, on the radio as well. The BBC were very, very influential because they were the only broadcasting company at this type point or official broadcasting company. But they were also being controlled by the government as well. OK. Um, so on the 1st of September 1939, on the day the war started, the BBC closed down its television transmit transmission and didn't actually start transmitting television um, television t shows again until 1946, but it did continue to broadcast radio programmes. Bearing in mind this wasn't such a big deal at the time because not very many people at all had televisions during this time. They were very expensive, they weren't very good. Um, and so it wasn't as if it wasn't like it would be today if you stopped transmitting TV shows. It, 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 it wasn't a massive thing. But radio was sort of the TV of that time. OK, so they, they didn't want to stop transmitting radio programmes. There was nine million license holders. Nearly every family had access to a radio. So it was very, very important for broadcast. The Ministry of Information had control over the BBC, but it didn't really need to interfere because the BBC became very good at census centering itself. Um, the BBC newsreaders become very popular. They actually start giving their names at the start of every broadcast so their listeners would know their voices in case of an invasion. Richard Dimbleby and Frank Gillard sent back vivid accounts of, um, of British forces in action. Dimbleby once reported from a British bombing raid in Berlin. If you go onto YouTube, you can actually see that. It's quite outstanding, actually, that he, he was actually there during the time during the time of Britain bombing in Berlin. Um, there was comedy programme, poking fun at Hitler, like it's that man again. There was music while you work, which improved the morale in the industry with cheerful music. OK, so if people were working in factories, in, in munitions factories, um, there was music while you work, which would, which would help improve their morale and sort of keep them going throughout the day as well. So they were really, really important. So you can see there that radio played a massive role in morale. It also advertised as well. Um, it also um, encouraged people to... to um, commit and to um, take part in the war effort as well. So very, 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 very important. 
So cinema, cinema is really important as well. Um, now, lots and lots of places have theatres um, in um, in the UK during this time. It was a huge, huge industry. Cardiff had a lot of cinemas in particular, and during the Second World War, actually in Cardiff, the cinema industry was was booming. Um, not only that as well in places like that, but like dance halls where they would show shows and all that kind of thing. Very, very popular. Um, and they used it to broadcast newsreels, so to show patriotic films such as Tomorrow We Live um, and The Day Will Dawn. OK, um, films were regulated by the government. So, again, they went through the Ministry of Information. They were controlled um, and they, they controlled what was actually shown to the audiences. But still, you had um, 1.5 million tickets sold in 1945. The Ministry of Information produced short films about coping um, with the war prob with problems created by war, and you had documentaries like Fires Were Started about firefighters in London. Everything completely thrown into and designed to basically help people um, cope with the war. Okay, so very, very, very important. Um, so what I want you to do now is I want you to go back. This the PowerPoint to this is actually attached. Okay. Um, and what I would like you to do is go back over those slides. Um, you can use BBC Bite Size as well to do this. BBC, if you go to BBC Bite Size where I've directed you before, there's lots of different pieces of information as well. And I want you to basically draw the diagram below for me. And what I want you to do is reasons that it was on the cinema on one side, radio on the other. And basically reasons that you think it was good at keeping up morale going up to the most important reason. So not so good at the bottom, all the way up to the top there. OK, so go back through the PowerPoint. This PowerPoint's attached to you as well. Um, and basically on either side, make some notes on why you think they might have been good. And then towards. So to finish this lesson off, I would just like you to have a go at this practice question, which is to what extent does the source accurately explain the importance of the radio in maintaining morale? Now, again, you need to think about um what this source is actually saying have a little look they're all sort of really sat around the ra sat around the radio um listening avidly they're all, they're all holding gas masks do you think what do you think this could be for could it be for a newspaper um think about the fact that they are um was every did every family have a radio like this all that kind of thing okay so use the information that you've got make sure um what you think about what's happening at the time make an opening judgment judgment justify the strength justify the limitation and think about who the audience might be OK, and there is a marking scheme for you there. Once you've done that, give yourself a mark and we are done.